guys and welcome to Howdy Gastro. In today's video, we will be doing a little bit of pediatric gastroenterology and we'll be talking about pyloric stenosis. So let's get started. So what is pyloric stenosis? Pyloric stenosis is a relatively rare condition, usually occurring in infants. It is a pathology that prevents the food in the stomach from entering the small intestine. Normally, a muscular valve at the tip of the stomach, called the pylorus, keeps the food in the stomach until it's ready for the next stage in the digestive process. In pyloric stenosis, however, a narrowing of the pylorus prevents the food from passing freely. So in the picture on the right, we have this little infant boy, and this is the picture of the stomach, and as you can see, this end part of the stomach at which point the small intestine meets the stomach and this is the pylorus right here he's in charge of allowing that food through but in pyloric stenosis this guy who's in charge of this point he constricts a bit too tightly and therefore he doesn't allow the gastric content to pass into the duodenum so most of the content just remains in the stomach and there's a backflow into the esophagus and the child has no other way to remove the food but to forcibly expel it or to vomit it. And that's one of the primary symptoms in pyloric stenosis. So I have another picture coming up. I'll explain further there. So here we have the normal stomach. And as you can see, the pylorus does contract, but it also relaxes. And when it relaxes, that orifice or that hole is quite big enough to allow that content to flow freely. But in pyloric stenosis, you can see that that food is going to have a very hard time to pass into the duodenum because it's so thick. The, the walls of the pylorus is so thick and muscular and dense that it almost covers the entire orifice of the pylorus. So this food is not able to pass through and therefore it causes a lot of symptoms. And as we go further in this presentation, you'll see why this is such a problem and why these children require quick medical attention. So what are the signs and symptoms of pyloric stenosis? Vomiting after feeding, because as you can imagine, that food has nowhere to go now. It cannot enter the small colon or the large colon, so it's gonna remain in the tummy and then push outward back into the esophagus. So we're gonna have vomiting after feeding and the newborn will vomit forcefully, ejecting breast milk or formula up several feet away, and this is called projectile vomiting. So this is a very key sign in pyloric stenosis, this projectile vomiting. And I put a picture on the left at the bottom. You can see this child. He's actually forcibly projecting that vomit out. And it's not just a small kind of reflux or, or anything like that. It's forceful and it goes quite a distance. They will also have persistent hunger because their food is not getting down into their intestines. They're not getting full. They're not getting any sort of nutrients from it. And it's just getting into their tummy and then coming right back out and then emptying their tummy again. So uh, babies who have pyloric stenosis often want to eat soon after vomiting. They will also have visible stomach contractions and the mother may notice wave-like contractions of peristalsis that ripple across the baby's upper abdomen soon after feeding, but before vomiting. This is caused by the stomach muscles trying to force through the narrow pylorus. So what the stomach cavity will actually do is it'll keep contracting, trying to push that uh, that food along through this point and because it's contracting and this the stomach is actually quite a large organ um, we are able to see it by looking at the abdomen of the child you can actually notice those little contractions happening the child may also suffer dehydration the baby might cry without tears or become lethargic and this is basically because he's not retaining any of the food that he gets so he's not getting any sort of fluids into his body and therefore he's going to go into dehydration. There will also be a change in the bowel movements and since pyloric stenosis prevents the food from reaching the intestines, babies with this condition will be constipated. Weight problems. Pyloric stenosis can keep baby from gaining weight and sometimes cause weight loss. And finally, one of the main signs is also an examination of the abdomen may allow the doctor to feel an enlarged pyloric muscle. And this is called the olive sign. So because this pylorus becomes so thick and muscular, um, it actually is compared to an olive. So if we palpate the child's abdomen, 
at this part, we will be able to feel kind of like a mass, a muscular mass, and it's compared to an olive. So this is an olive positive sign. So how is pyloric stenosis diagnosed? So the doctor during a physical examination will check for a lump in the abdomen, which is usually firm and movable and feels like an olive. So as we discussed, these children are olive sign positive. Uh, the child will also present with those before mentioned symptoms like projectile vomiting and the stomach contractions, hunger, weight problems, all those before mentioned symptoms. We can also use to diagnose the pyloric stenosis and abdominal ultrasound. And here we can notice an enlarged or thickened pylorus. And you can see this is sort of the ultrasound image that we get. Uh, we notice that the pylorus becomes elongated and thicker. And another diagnostic test is the barium swallow test. And during this test, a small amount of chalky liquid called barium is ingested. And then special x-rays are taken to view the, the pyloric area of the stomach to see if there's any narrowing or blockage. So at the point of the black arrows or my white arrow, you can see that there's a narrowing here and this is normally supposed to be uniform along this way. But in this little part here, it just becomes so narrow and it's actually supposed to be a complete width of this channel continuing down to meet this channel. So you guys can see why there's a problem to push that liquid out and that's why there's a backflow and eventually the child is forced to expel the content. So continuing with the diagnosis, the doctor will also order a set of blood tests to check the levels of electrolytes in the infant and the following results are suggestive for pyloric stenosis. So something to note is because these children are not getting any source of fluid and also food into their systems, it's going to cause somewhat of an electrolyte imbalance within them. And in these children, we have a hypochloremic, hypokalemic metabolic acidosis. And this is the classic electrolyte acid balance in base in these patients. And as we mentioned earlier, they are often dehydrated. And as a result, they will have hypernatremia or hyponatremia and may result in pre-renal failure. Um, and these patients also have elevated unconjugated bilirubin levels. So these all help us to diagnose a pyloric stenosis. And finally, the treatment in pyloric stenosis. So first of all, an IV line is placed and the baby will be admitted to the hospital and prepared for surgery. Any dehydration or electrolyte imbalances or problems in the blood will be corrected with IV fluids within 24 hours. So it's easy for us to correct the electrolyte imbalance and the dehydration. But of course, that's not the main problem because the main problem still exists in the pylorus. And for that, we may do surgical or non-surgical techniques to correct them. For the majority of patients, surgery will be required to treat the pyloric stenosis. And the procedure is called a pyloromyotomy. And in a pyloromyotomy, the surgeon cuts through the outside layer of the thickened pylorus muscles, allowing the inner layers to bulge out. And this opens a channel for food to pass through into the small intestine. In infants who cannot have surgery, a device called an endoscope with a tiny balloon at the end is used. The balloon is inflated to widen the pylorus. So in the picture above, I've showed you what the endoscopic balloon process looks like. So basically this endoscope is introduced and when the balloon is in this area, it is inflated and it pushes those walls open and it allows this lumen to get larger so that the food is now able to pass from the stomach into the duodenum. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.